Hello everyone, uh, this is time for a pitch air update. This is episode eight, nine, not sure. And today is all about structures and how we sit aeroplanes on top of shipping containers. So, here we go. Right, this is where we're at. Quick summary, if you haven't been watching all this stuff already. Here's the industrial estate, bunch of warehouses, bunch of shipping containers, and the aircraft. The intention is that we uh, da, 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 that we um, use our shipping containers here. These are being leveled off next week. We then do some steel work structure on the top of the containers and the aircraft gets sat on top. So let's talk through how that's gonna work and hopefully um, people can give me some input on this and some thoughts. Right, so here's a side view. Boeing 727, 40 something meters long. Um, Takeoff weight 36 tonne. There's no wings, no engines. We've been told that it's 12 tonne. We're going to work to 20 to be on the safe side. Front bit, pretty straightforward. It's just um, landing gear. We're looking at doing some spreaders across the length of the container and then another spreader across those spreaders, which the landing gear sits on top of. Of course, the landing gear can hold the force of the front of the aircraft, so that's pretty straightforward. And our rationale is as long as those spreader beams, the red ones, extend long enough we're going to transfer the load through the corner post and through the corrugated wall section. We are considering as well, and here's where your input's really valuable, of putting some additional corner posts inside the shipping container, or maybe um, a sheet of maybe 10 mil plate steel to make the corrugation more rigid so that the force is spread out. I think all of that's excessive, but what do you think? We want to make this absolutely rock solid safe, but we also want to go belt and brake as well we need to, if we're not sure. Um, so that's the front, relatively straightforward. Now the back, things get more complex. Because these containers are on a hill, we need to make it to so the position the aircraft sits on, which is that point right there, is, I the point could like that point right there, the weatherman, um, is at the right height, so the aircraft sits completely flat. So we're gonna laser level these two points to figure out this top point here. But the structure, I'm gonna talk through my rationale here, with a hope to get some input on this. So, here is how it looks. The idea is, again, more spreader beams that transfer the load across the corner post of a 20 foot container. The red one there, can I point at that? It's quite hard to do, isn't it? There it is, that, that, that one, there, whatever. Um, spreads the load across those corner posts. Same with that one there. Then this one here would be a bit wider so it could be welded to four corner posts, two on this container, two on this one. So we've now got the load spread across four corner posts and we know that these shipping containers can hold massive, massive loads. I think it's 36 ton or so on top of each container, so plenty of capacity there. And it's sitting on tarmac on the yard, so that's all fine. Then you need to figure out what is the thickness of these beams? We obviously want them to be safe and strong, but also not be excessive because the bigger they are, the heavier they are, the harder to move they are, and the more expensive they are. Then on top of those spreaders, the red and yellow ones, we need these pink ones, which give us a position for the goalposts. Again, how thick do they need to be? Noting the distance between here and here is eight foot, 2.44 meters. So that is potentially about a seven foot span there with a point load in the middle, same with that one there. Although, should we, and we could, move the frame down so each of these is over the top of the container spreaders. Next thing, goal post going up and over. Of course, we're avoiding shear forces, shear force being when things do that. We want the horizontal to sit on top of the leg so everything's in compression, and essentially the welds are there to keep things in place as opposed to take load. Concerned as well about lateral movement of the structure moving like this and collapsing, not that I think it would. So we're thinking putting some maybe two by two box section diagonally, one this way, one that way to act as a tie or a strut to stop it doing that or that. Then at the top, we want to spread the load out so we're not putting like a load of force through one rivet because that would probably just pop out and then it would rust and get all horrible. So I'm thinking on here we put some 10 mil plate steel welded to the top to spread that load out, then some neoprene on top of that. So again, the load spread a bit more, we don't have metal or metal so much. So that's the current rationale, what do we think? Uh, any ideas on how we can make this more elegant, more efficient, um, while maintaining safety and structural stability? Should we be doing things like moving these green bits here? I'm gonna draw this now, because I'm that quick. 
um, should be moving them down to here so they're above the spreader, or is it good that we're spreading this load quite equally across two containers? Let me know your thoughts. Um, once we've got the design about right, I'll then be submitting it to the structural engineer who can then really analyze it properly and going far beyond the intuitive approach that I take. Thanks for your input. Keen to hear what you think. By the way, the containers are being moved next week with the crane, 17th and 18th of December, and the week in the 30th and 31st of January is when it gets real. That is when pitch air is dumped on a truck and driven all the way to Bristol and craned off. I hope this is going to be a massive, massive event in terms of people capturing on camera and sharing online. Hopefully see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.